When we talk about existential threats to human society, the conversation typically comes down to nuclear bombs and asteroids, either our compulsion for building weapons of mass destruction eventually backfires or something massive just falls on us from space. Now, what if I told you we could have both at the same time? This is the military's worst idea and the reasons why will surprise you. What we are really talking about here is kinetic bombardment. It basically just means dropping stuff on people and letting kinetic energy do the rest. We know from Einstein that mass is equivalent to energy. This is what he was getting at with the whole E equals MC squared thing, and when you combine mass with velocity, you get kinetic energy, which is the energy of an object in motion. Now, if something were to try and stop that motion, then you'd get an equal and opposite reaction to the kinetic energy. That is Newton's third law. And depending on how heavy your object is and how fast it's moving, the result of trying to stop it could be explosive. The US military started exploiting this concept back in the 1950s with a weapon called the Lazy Dog Bomb. These were used in both the Korean and Vietnamese wars. They're less like bombs and more like bullets with tail fins. Each was only 1.75 inches in length and half an inch in diameter. Essentially, what they would do was just fly over an enemy position and drop a whole ton of these things on their heads. If you let them go from a high enough altitude, you get the effect of firing a gigantic machine gun straight down. From here, the next logical step is, of course, to try dropping something even bigger and heavier from an even higher altitude like space. This idea is generally credited to a guy named Jerry Pornell, who worked in operations research at Boeing in the 1950s. He theorized that you could launch telephone pole-sized rods made of tungsten down from Earth's orbit to damage targets on the ground. If dropping a bullet from an airplane was equivalent to a gun, then dropping a metal telephone pole from space could be equivalent to a nuclear bomb. This weapon was typically referred to by a nickname, Rods from God. Pretty self-explanatory. I'll give you a hint right now. This may sound simple in theory, but the actual logistics of Rods from God are way beyond what Jerry could have imagined. Luckily, it was the 1950s and the US couldn't launch anything into space yet, let alone a gigantic supermassive metal rod, so the idea remained just that, a very simple yet potentially devastating idea. The Rods from God concept would show up many times over the decades in science fiction novels, anime, and video games, but in 2003, kinetic bombardment was formalized in a US Air Force proposal. Rods from God was renamed to hypervelocity rod bundles, and the Air Force settled on dimensions for each rod of 20 feet in length by 1 foot in diameter. Each would be forged from solid tungsten with a mass between 8 and 9 tons. Now, we keep seeing this word, tungsten. What is that, and how did it become the de facto material choice for the rods from God? Well, tungsten is a very rare and unique metal. It has the highest melting point of all known elements. 6,192 degrees Fahrenheit or 3,422 degrees Celsius, meaning that it can easily survive atmospheric reentry without a heat shield. Tungsten has a density similar to gold and strength higher than steel. So when you factor that all together, it really is a prime candidate for dropping from space. Anyway, the fact these rods would originate in orbit means their natural kinetic energy potential would be massive. Orbital velocity relative to the Earth's surface is around 8 kilometers per second or 26,000 feet per second or Mach 24. As the rod re-enters Earth's atmosphere, it would lose most of its velocity, impacting with a speed of around Mach 10, but the remaining energy would cause extreme damage. Some systems are quoted as having the equivalent yield to a small tactical nuclear bomb. The rods from God are typically envisioned as bunker busters, meaning that they would be specialized to penetrate underground targets like nuclear bunkers and launch silos. In addition to their destructive force, 
the rods from God have a significant speed advantage. You see, an intercontinental ballistic missile has to launch from the ground to space before falling back down to acquire its target, while a rod from God simply falls from space, meaning that it could hit a target within 12 to 15 minutes of launch, less than half the time taken by an ICBM. Then, given the high velocity, rapid deployment, and small size of the rod, it would be relatively impossible to defend against. So as terrible and destructive and dangerous as that all sounds, I'm going to contest that the rods from God are actually the last thing we should be worried about. Just like exploring the vastness of space can be thrilling yet overwhelming, life here on Earth can sometimes feel the same way. Have you ever felt stressed or anxious and wished you had someone to talk to? While coping mechanisms and self-care rituals like meditating or stargazing can be helpful, they might not always be enough to handle everything life throws at you. We've all experienced those moments when overbearing thoughts seem to creep back in despite our best efforts to keep them at bay, and even though our friends and family can be supportive, you might want an unbiased perspective on things. In those tough times, it's important to remember that you're not floating alone in space, and seeking extra help can make a big difference. That's where BetterHelp comes in, our sponsor for today's video. BetterHelp is an online platform that connects you with a licensed therapist who can provide support and guidance. Just like navigating the stars, navigating our mental health is important as well. With BetterHelp, you can find a therapist who understands your unique struggles and offers helpful, unbiased advice. Getting started is easy. Just visit betterhelp.com slash the space race, answer a few questions, and you'll be matched with a therapist, usually within 48 hours. You can communicate through phone calls, video chats, or messaging, whichever way feels more comfortable to you. Let BetterHelp assist you on your mental health journey, all from the comfort of your own home. Visit betterhelp.com slash the space race, or use the link in the description to get a special discount on your first month. Just like space exploration, taking care of your mental health is a journey worth embarking on. Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our exploration of the stars. So, dropping stuff from space only really makes sense if you either don't think about it too hard or don't know a single thing about orbital mechanics. Luckily, after four years of making these videos, I've acquired a basic understanding of the fundamental physics behind spaceflight, and I can tell you, there are a few problems with this whole rods from God theory. In fact, there are many problems. So, for one, you can't just drop stuff from space, and that's not because there isn't gravity up there. In a low Earth orbit of a couple hundred miles above the surface, the force of gravity is still almost equal to what we experience on the ground. If you could somehow climb a ladder to the altitude of the International Space Station, and then jumped off, you wouldn't float, you'd fall. What keeps stuff floating in orbit is velocity. Again, if you went to the top of that space ladder and watched the ISS fly by, it would be shooting past you like a giant bullet traveling at 24 times the speed of sound. The experience of microgravity in orbit is the equivalent of a free fall. In order to remain in orbit, you simply have to move fast enough that you fall around the Earth. That's angular momentum. It can be a bit tricky to wrap your head around, I know, on a totally unrelated note, Shout out to the Flat Earth community who somehow always manages to find our videos. Thanks for the comments, guys. Anyway, the point being that you can't just drop a metal telephone pole from space. You need to try harder. Option number one would be if we could maybe shoot the rod straight down from orbit with some kind of a space gun or maybe an orbital catapult. But either way, the platform used to launch the rod would have to be significantly more massive than the 9-ton rod itself. Otherwise, the rod would stay relatively still, and the platform would go flying up into space. Now, let's say that you could theoretically just shoot a solid tungsten pole straight down towards the Earth from space. You still can't because it's impossible to fly straight in space. What I mean by that is your metal pole would still be carrying the 26,000 feet per second of angular momentum, in addition to being launched directly at the surface of the Earth. So, it would be moving both down and sideways at incredible speeds. That alone would be very difficult to aim if no other variables were considered, but there are many other variables to consider, such as the rotation of the Earth. You're trying to hit a moving target from a moving platform with a moving projectile. Eventually, your rod would start to impact the Earth's atmosphere, where forces of drag and friction would begin to act on it to varying degrees as it falls deeper into the thickening air, 
which is the point where wind and air currents will start to influence the free fall of the metal rod. What a lot of people don't realize is that a cylinder doesn't want to fall straight down. They have a natural tendency to fall on their sides. So to think that there's any chance of just launching a solid metal pole from space and having it free fall onto a precise location that you intend and hit a bullseye on something as relatively small as a bunker, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Not unless you have some kind of mastermind AI that can instantly calculate and correct for every variable that rod might encounter on its 200 mile journey from space. Otherwise, you're stuck doing the exact same thing that the US Air Force started back in the 1950s with the lazy dogs. You could drop the rods onto the general area where you know the enemy is located and just hope that one lands on them. Not exactly advanced warfare, but probably pretty effective. Now, my last consideration here is SpaceX. If Elon Musk can bring a rocket back from space and land it precisely on a floating platform in the ocean, then could that same technology be used to land a rod from God? In terms of general shape and form, the Falcon 9 rocket booster is a lot like a telephone pole. That's a decent starting point, but the Falcon 9 has two distinct characteristics that help it to successfully maneuver from space all the way back down to Earth. Those are rocket engines and grid fins. If the only thing keeping an object in space is velocity, then in order to fall down, you simply need to slow down. That's the first thing that the booster is going to do. It flips around and starts firing its rocket engines in the opposite direction to counteract the angular momentum that was gained during the launch. And once the velocity is eliminated, gravity can take over and start pulling the rocket straight back down. This is where the grid fins come into play. The rocket booster won't just free fall straight back to the landing site, it has to be carefully directed into position. SpaceX uses aerodynamic grid fins to channel air as it rushes by and redirect that force to steer the rocket down to the landing pad. So if we were to add rocket engines and grid fins to our metal telephone pole, would that finally make it the ultimate weapon? Well, no, because a rocket booster is a highly complex integrated flying machine with fuel tanks, plumbing, electrical systems, hydraulics, batteries, onboard computers, and ground communication systems, while a rod from God is just a big metal rod. It doesn't have any of those things, and if it did, then now what we're really talking about is crash landing a rocket on top of someone, and that's a whole other thing from just dropping a solid metal telephone pole on their head, which as we've established is not as easy as you'd think.